I want a divorce. The words hit me like a truck, stealing my breath away. I stared at Theo in disbelief, searching his face for any hint that he was joking. But his cold eyes betrayed no humor. Well, what are you talking about? I managed to choke out. Why would you say something like that? Theo leaned back in his chair, lips curling into a cruel smirk. There's no easy way to put this, Marla. I've met someone else, someone younger, more. His gaze raked over me with disdain. Vibrant. My hands shook as I gripped the edge of the table. After twenty-five years of marriage, of supporting him through thick and thin, this was how he repaid me? Who is she? I demanded, my voice trembling with rage and hurt. How long has this been going on? Does it really matter? Theo shrugged, utterly unbothered by my anguish. What matters is that I'm done with this sham of a marriage. I'm leaving you, Marla. Leaving me? The words cut deep, fueling a simmering anger within me. Just like that? After everything I've sacrificed for you, for this family? Theo scoffed. Don't act so wounded. We both know you've gotten just as much out of this arrangement as I have. The lavish lifestyle, the social status, it's all thanks to me and my success. I recoiled as if he'd slapped me. How dare he belittle the countless evenings I put aside my own needs to facilitate his career. The dinner parties, the social obligations, all while quietly suffering from our inability to have children of our own. You selfish prick, I spat. I gave you everything, and this is how you treat me? Keep your voice down, Theo hissed, glancing around the empty dining room, always so concerned with appearances, even in his betrayal. Don't you dare tell me what to do. My voice rose, raw with decades of pent-up resentment. I'm not some obedient little wife you can discard when I no longer amuse you. I won't let you do this to me, Theo. Do you hear me? I won't let you destroy everything we've built without a fight. A cruel laugh escaped his lips. And what exactly do you think you can do, Marla? I'm the one who made us, and I can just as easily break us apart if I want to. His arrogance, his callousness, it ignited a fire within me, a fierce determination to make him pay for his betrayal. We'll see about that, I hissed, pushing back from the table. You want a divorce? Fine, but don't think you'll get away with this scot-free. I'm going to fight for every last cent, and I'm going to make sure the whole city knows exactly what kind of man you really are. Theo shook his head with an infuriating air of smugness. Whatever helps you sleep at night, dear. Just remember you've got nothing on me. I turned on my heel and stormed out, my body shaking with rage and humiliation. That arrogant bastard thought he could throw me away like a used rag? He was badly mistaken. This was far from over. If Theo wanted a war, then I would give him one, and I didn't intend to lose. I sipped my coffee, staring out at the expansive view of the city skyline from the floor-to-ceiling windows of our penthouse apartment. Just a few years ago, this opulent lifestyle seemed like a distant dream. Now, it was my reality, a hard-won reward for the sacrifices I'd made to support Theo's relentless ambition. It all started over twenty-five years ago, when we were just two starry-eyed kids fresh out of college. Theo had big plans to make it in the real estate game, and I believed in him wholeheartedly. We scraped by on next to nothing, living in a cramped studio apartment, while Theo hustled from deal to deal. This is just the beginning, babe. He'd tell me with that cocksure grin. One day, we'll have it all. The house, the cars, the whole nine yards. I never doubted him for a second. When the rejections and setbacks came, I was there to bolster his determination, to be the rock he needed to keep chasing his dreams. Of course, I had dreams of my own once, visions of starting a family, raising children in a loving home. But fate had other plans. After years of fertility treatments and heartbreak, we had to accept that kids just weren't in the cards for us. It's okay, honey, Theo soothed, wrapping me in his strong embrace after the last negative test. We've got each other and that's enough for me. His words brought me comfort, even as they stoked the lingering ember of maternal longing deep within me. I poured that yearning into supporting Theo instead, becoming his biggest cheerleader as his fortunes began to shift. It wasn't an easy road. Theo was relentless in his pursuit of success, often working seven days a week, neglecting everything but the next big deal. I lost count of the evenings I ate dinner alone or the weekends I spent holed up in our apartment while he schmoozed clients and negotiated contracts. Just a little longer, baby, he'd promise, that hungry glint in his eyes. 
Once I land that Westbrook development, we'll be set for life. So I waited, and I supported him, no matter what, because at the end of the day, his success was our success, or so I thought. Earth to Marla, Theo's gruff voice shattered my reminiscence. I turned to see him standing in the doorway, signature smirk plastered across his face. Where does your mind wander off to these days? He chided, strolling over to pour himself a glass of scotch. I regarded him coolly, unable to shake the bitterness that had taken root since his shattering confession. Just thinking about how far we've come, I replied, keeping my tone even. Theo barked out a laugh, so utterly cavalier about the life we'd built together. You can say that again? Who would have thought the Wilkins kid from the trailer park would end up with a real estate empire worth hundreds of millions? My jaw clenched at his arrogance, at his callous disregard for my role in his ascent. We've worked hard to get here, I reminded him acidly. Or have you forgotten about the nights I lay awake, waiting for you to come home from schmoozing investors? The moves I put my career on hold to support yours? Theo waved a dismissive hand. Relax, would you? No one's denying the sacrifices you made, but let's not pretend like I wasn't the one pulling the real weight all these years. The audacity of his words struck me speechless. After everything, he still couldn't bring himself to acknowledge my contribution, my unwavering devotion that helped fuel his success. You're unbelievable, I seethed, the rage bubbling up once more. You smug, selfish bastard, you'd be nothing without me. In a flash, Theo closed the distance between us, his fingers clamping around my arm like a vice. Don't you ever speak to me that way again, he growled, his eyes glittering with menace. I built this life with my bare hands, and you'll show me some goddamn respect. I flinched at the force of his grip, but held his stare, refusing to back down. Or what? I challenged. You'll leave me? Like you already have? His lip curled with contempt, and he shoved me away with a harsh laugh. Maybe I made the right call after all? You've gotten awfully uppity in your old age. With that parting shot, he stormed out, leaving me seething amid the luxurious trappings that were supposed to be our dream life. In that moment, the rose-tinted lenses shattered. I saw Theo for what he truly was, a selfish, egotistical bully who only valued me when I was helping to advance his aspirations. Well, if that was the way he wanted to play it, so be it. It was time for me to start looking out for myself and to make him pay dearly for his betrayal. The next morning I awoke with a renewed sense of purpose. No more would I wallow in self-pity or dwell on the life I thought I had. It was time to take action and fight for what was rightfully mine. I waited until Theo left for work before making my move. With trembling fingers I punched the number for a private investigator I had found online, someone discreet with a reputation for digging up even the dirtiest of secrets. How can I assist you today, ma'am? The gruff male voice on the other end answered. I took a deep, stealing breath. I need to hire you. My husband has been unfaithful, and I want you to find out every last sordid detail. There was a pregnant pause, as if he was assessing whether I was truly prepared to open this Pandora's box. Very well, he replied at last. I'll need some basic information to get started. I spent the next hour recounting everything I knew, Theo's long hours, his recent distance, that fateful confession that had shattered my world. With each detail, I could practically hear the gears turning in the investigator's mind. Leave it to me, Mrs. Wilkins. If there's anything to find, I'll find it. Those words buoyed me for the rest of the day as I waited impatiently for Theo to return home. When he finally did, swaggering through the door with his usual arrogant air, I could barely contain my contempt. "'Working late again tonight, dear?' I asked with saccharine sweetness. Theo shot me a puzzled look, no doubt finding my chipper mood at odds with our earlier altercation. "'Maybe for a couple of hours. Why, you need something?' "'Not at all,' I demurred, batting my lashes. "'I just thought we could have a nice dinner together, the two of us, before you head back out.' He eyed me skeptically. Since when are you so interested in my schedule? I shrugged, feigning nonchalance. Can't a wife want to spend quality time with her hard-working husband? That seemed to placate him, and Theo grunted in assent. I suppose I could make some time before heading to the office, if it means that much to you. Wonderful. I beamed, already plotting how I would play this evening to my advantage. I'll make us something special. 
As Theo settled onto the sofa to unwind, I busied myself in the kitchen, my mind racing with possibilities. I needed him to let his guard down, to give me even the slightest morsel of information that could aid my investigation. By the time I served dinner, Theo was much more amiable, or as amiable as his sour disposition permitted. He dug into his plate with gusto, praising my culinary efforts between bites. You've really outdone yourself, babe. Reminds me of our early days when this was all we could afford. He punctuated the remark with one of his condescending chuckles. I forced a simpering smile. Well, you know how much I cherish those memories. We've come such a long way since then. That we have, he agreed readily, and to think I nearly threw in the towel more times than I can count back then. There it was, the opening I needed. I schooled my features into an expression of innocent curiosity. Really? You never told me that before. Theo waved a dismissive hand. Eh, it was a long time ago, just the normal pressures of trying to get my business off the ground. If it weren't for your support... He trailed off, taking a healthy swig of wine. I did what any wife would do, I replied modestly, silently urging him to continue. Yeah. Well, not everyone would have stuck around through all the lean years. The missed paychecks, the mounting debt. Theo shook his head ruefully. Lord knows I wasn't always the perfect husband, working myself to the bone to make those early deals happen. We all have our regrets, I said carefully. The important thing is that we made it through together, right? A dark look flickered across Theo's face, one that raised the hairs on the back of my neck. For a fleeting instant... I saw the depths of his selfishness, his utter disregard for anyone or anything that didn't serve his interests. Yeah, together, he muttered more to himself than me. We'll see how long that lasts, I suppose. A tense silence stretched between us, thick with unspoken malice and the weight of his newest betrayal. Finally, Theo pushed back from the table with a grunt. I should get going. Still got work to do if I want to hold on to this lifestyle. Of course, dear, I replied automatically. Don't work too hard now. Theo shot me one last inscrutable look before heading out, leaving me alone with the sick realization that I had married a man every bit as vile as the rumors had claimed. This was no longer about saving my marriage. It was about protecting myself from the monster I had wed. And I would fight tooth and nail to do so, no matter what. The next few weeks were a whirlwind of clandestine meetings and poring over the mounting evidence gathered by the private investigator. With each new revelation, the full extent of Theo's betrayal came into sharper focus, stoking the flames of my righteous fury. It turned out his dalliance with his latest conquest was merely the tip of the iceberg. The investigator uncovered a sordid trail of affairs spanning years, each mistress seemingly younger and more vapid than the last. This guy's got more notches on his bedpost than I've ever seen, the P.I. grunted as he handed me the latest damning report, complete with photos and hotel receipts. You sure you want to keep digging? This ain't gonna get any prettier, lady. I steeled my jaw and nodded firmly. I need to know everything, every last detail, every shred of proof that he's the lying, cheating snake I always feared he was. The man shrugged, seemingly unbothered by my morbid fascination. Your dime. Just don't say I didn't warn you when it all hits the fan. True to his word, the discoveries became more gut-wrenching with each passing day. Bank statements revealed secret accounts socked away, no doubt for funding Theo's more unsavory proclivities. Call logs and emails painted a lurid picture of just how depraved and far-reaching his philandering had become over the years. Yet, as appalled as I was, some masochistic part of me couldn't look away. I drank in every last ugly detail, every new low my husband of twenty-five years managed to stoop to. This, this was the man I had sacrificed so much for, deluded into thinking his ambition and success were something to be admired. When the P.I. began looking into the background of Theo's current fling, a willowy blonde named Lila barely older than our marriage, the picture grew even more sordid. Turned out she was a known grifter, a con artist with a history of preying on wealthy older men. I got all the dirt you could want on this piece of work. The P.I. relayed with relish, tossing a thick manila envelope onto the table. Multiple aliases, fraud charges from a dozen different states. You name it, she's done it. I flipped through the contents with a weary sort of resignation, 
absorbing each new lurid detail about the trollop that had so utterly ensnared my clueless husband. Look at this one, the P.I. inserted, pointing to a grainy mugshot. Got busted trying to shake down some bigwig in Miami, convicted felon, just like that. Of course she is, I muttered with a hollow laugh. It all made perfect, twisted sense in hindsight. Lila was just another vulture, lasering in on the corpse of my marriage to feast on what remained of Theo's riches and status. I rifled through the last of the damning documents, emails, phone records, all laying out Lila and Theo's sordid plot in stark black and white. My blood boiled at the record of their scheming, at the nauseating pet names and crass innuendos sprinkled throughout. That should about cover everything, the P.I. noted, watching me absorb the final blows with clinical detachment. I'd say you've got enough ammo to hang Romeo and his little Juliet out to dry dozen times over. Convulsively, my hands curled into white-knuckled fists around the file, the stark proof of my husband's depravity. Good. I bit out, every raw nerve ending in my body thrumming with the need for vengeance. Because I'm not going to just hang them, I'm going to burn their whole goddamn world to the ground." The P.I. regarded me with an almost pitying expression, as if he couldn't decide whether I was magnificently ruthless or just plain mad. "'If that's how you want to play it, lady,' he said at last with a shrug, "'just tell me where to aim the first shot.' I leveled him with a look of glittering determination, no trace of doubt lingering behind my eyes. "'At Theo. Make him hurt first, squeeze him for everything he's worth until there's nothing left. Then, when he's lying broken on the ground—' A cruel smile twisted my lips. That's when we destroy the bitch that helped bring him down. I had been a fool to idolize Theo all these years, to sacrifice and subjugate myself in pursuit of his success. But the days of being a meek, obedient wife were over. This was war, and I didn't intend to take any prisoners. With the voluminous file of evidence tucked under my arm, I strode into Theo's office with the confidence of a woman who had nothing left to lose. His secretary opened her mouth to protest, but I brushed past her with a look that dared her to try and stop me. The door to Theo's private sanctuary flew open with a bang, and I saw him jolt upright behind his imposing mahogany desk, his brows knit together in a scowl of displeasure at the intrusion. "'Marla, what is the meaning of this?' he barked, that blustering arrogance already rearing its ugly head. "'I'm in the middle of—' "'Save it.' I cut him off sharply, tossing the damning file onto his desk with a resonant thump. I know everything, Theo. Every last dirty, depraved detail. His eyes flicked towards the scattered papers dubiously. I don't know what you think, you. Lila Thompson, Brianna Rise, Jessica Alvarez. Need I go on? I recited the list of his mistress's names with cold precision, watching as his bronzed complexion blanched. How did you— Theo swallowed hard, suddenly wary in the face of my resolute fury. "'I have my ways,' I replied, allowing a triumphant smile to crease my lips. "'Friends in low places, let's just call it that. Friends who are more than happy to sell out a lying, cheating scumbag like you for the right price.' Theo's jaw clenched, but he made no move to deny the mounting evidence. We both knew there was no use trying. I had him nailed to the wall. "'So what, you came here to gloat?' he spat at last. To try and shame me into staying in this sham of a marriage? That familiar sneer crept across his features as he tried to reclaim some semblance of control. Save your breath, Marla. I'm done with you. Done with this pathetic life we've— Not so fast, I interjected smoothly, shaking my head in mock sympathy. You don't get to decide when we're done. Not any more. Theo opened his mouth, no doubt to unleash another torrent of vitriol, but I barreled forward, refusing to cede him an inch of ground. Let me lay it out for you, Theo. You're going to do exactly as I say, down to the letter. You're going to end this little fling with your girlfriend, cut off every last dime to her, leave her penniless on the street. His eyes narrowed dangerously. Like hell I am. You don't get to dick. Then? I spoke over him, louder and more implacable. You're going to transfer the bulk of your assets into my name. Every last property, business holding, investment account, the lot. And if I so much as catch a whiff of you keeping anything back, even a penny. Leaning forward, I pinned him with a gaze of molten steel. I go public with everything. The affairs, the money trails, every dirty secret. I'll make sure to time it just right to nuke any big deals you have in the pipeline, too. 
Theo surged to his feet, slamming his palms onto the desk hard enough to rattle the crystal tumbler perched there. You vindictive bitch, he seethed, spittle flying from his twisted mouth. Who the hell do you think you are, trying to take what's mine? I earned every last cent, every asset. You're goddamn lucky I let you ride my coattails for as long as I did. I held up a single hand, quieting his tantrum. When I spoke again, it was with an eerie calm that seemed to unnerve him more than any shouting match could. I'm not asking for your permission, Theo. I'm telling you how it's going to be, whether you like it or not. This is your one chance to walk away with a shred of dignity left before I obliterate everything you've built. His chest heaved with each ragged breath, the vein in his temple throbbing violently. For an endless moment, those predatory eyes bored into me, as if he were trying to decide whether I truly had the stones to make good on my promise. You're bluffing, he rasped at last, the words more hopeful than certain. You don't have it in you to take me down like that, not after everything we've been through. My responding smile was frigid, devoid of any warmth or fondness for the wretched man standing before me. Watch me. Spinning on my heel, I strode from the office with my head held high, the fire of victory and vengeance burning bright in my chest. The self-made emperor had just learned he wouldn't be the one dictating the terms of his downfall. That privilege now belonged to me, and I intended to savor every agonizing second of retribution against the bastard who had betrayed me. The days following my confrontation with Theo were a flurry of activity. True to his arrogant nature, he tried to call my bluff at first, dodging my calls, ignoring my demands to capitulate, but I was prepared for his recalcitrance. Time for phase two, I told the private investigator grimly. With a few keystrokes, he set the wheels in motion, leaking snippets of the most damning evidence to a few key media contacts. It was a calculated risk, but one I was willing to take to force Theo's hand. The first bombshell dropped a week later in the city's prime gossip rag, prominent developer caught in sordid web of infidelity. The lurid headline was accompanied by photos document explicitly detailing Theo's affairs over the years. I could only imagine the aneurysm he must have had when his latest mistress came flouncing into his office, magazine in hand, and demanding to know what the hell was going on. The phone rang shortly after, that familiar bravado finally cracking as Theo realized I wasn't messing around. You crazy bitch! He was practically frothing at the mouth. What have you done? Just a taste of what's to come if you don't start playing by my rules. I replied coolly. This is your last warning, Theo. Do as I've asked. Give me what I'm owed, and we can make all, all this unpleasantness go away. There was a perilous pause before he ground out. Fine. You win. Tell me what you want. I smirked in satisfaction, reeling off my list of demands. Not just the asset transfers, but his immediate resignation from all his business ventures, too. Only total and abject capitulation would satisfy me. Theo issued a strangled noise of outrage, but I could hear the resignation creeping into his tone as the weight of his circumstances became clear. You'll regret this, Marla. I swear to God, when the dust settles, you're going to wish you'd never crossed me. I'll take my chances, I replied breezily, signaling for the P.I. to end the call. Once the paperwork was signed and Theo was legally divested of everything he held dear, the barrage of media exposes intensified. It was open season on the fallen titan, and every scandal rag and clickbait website gorged themselves on the salacious details like sharks smelling blood in the water. I watched from the sidelines with no small sense of vindication as the pundits and social critics sharpened their claws, tearing apart Theo's persona and empire with vicious glee. The proverbial chickens were coming home to roost, and Theo's karmic debt was growing steeper by the day. Breaking Major development deals scrapped as Richardson Financial pulls support. Tarnished icon, a look at Wilkins' long list of improprieties. With each new headline, I could feel the blistering heat of Theo's hatred singeing the distance between us. But I was untouchable. And he knew it. Any move against me would only deepen the quagmire he found himself drowning in. Perhaps nothing summed up the sheer totality of his disgrace more than the day I opened the mailbox to find a plain manila envelope. No return address, no markings aside from my name scrawled across the front in thick, angry strokes. Inside was a desolate article from some local Vegas tabloid. 
heiress Lila Thompson deserted by embattled former lover. Splashed across the cheap, grainy pages were unflattering shots of Lila, the woman who started this whole firestorm by daring to insinuate herself into my life, into my marriage. Now she was out on the streets, a few thousand dollars lighter from whatever pittance Theo had managed to siphon away to her before I closed that avenue for good. I traced my fingers over the flushed, angry picture of that miserable harlot, felt the smooth paper crinkle beneath my touch. For a fleeting moment, I almost felt sorry for her, just another hustler who got conned by someone slicker and greedier than she was. Almost, but not quite. The bittersweet victory of holding the proof of her downfall in my hands was too delicious to let pity gain any true foothold. She made her bed, just like Theo, and now they were destined to lie in the rubble of the lives they'd so wantonly demolished. As for me, my path forward was clear and unsullied, I paved with the ashes of my vengeful retribution. No more would I be a victim, not to Theo, not to any man's selfish whims. I was the master of my own destiny now. And this, I decided with a grim smile, was only the beginning. In the weeks after the media storm hit its feverish peak, an eerie calm descended over the city. It was as if everyone was holding their breath, waiting to see if the once mighty Theo Wilkins would somehow defy the odds and claw his way back from oblivion. I knew better, of course. My own private investigator kept me apprised of Theo's every crippled move, each more pathetic and desperate than the last. Guy's been making the rounds with every low-life investor and loan shark in the city, the P.I. reported with a sardonic chuckle. Seems he's quickly burning through what little cash you didn't bleed out of him. Let him grovel, I replied dispassionately. He knew exactly what he was risking when he crossed me. Still, I couldn't help but feel a perverse sense of satisfaction at hearing the sordid details of Theo's downward spiral. After everything he'd put me through, every last indignity, it was only right that he suffered his penance with interest. It all came to a head one sultry summer evening, as I nursed a glass of Malbec on the balcony of my new high-rise apartment. The penthouse might have been Theo's once, but it was mine now, along with the rest of the fortune he and deceived for over the years. My hands were trembling with a furious ringer by the time the P.I. arrived at my door, his expression grim beneath the brim of his battered fedora. Well? I demanded without preamble. What's the latest? The P.I. sighed, sinking into the plush leather armchair across from me. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, Marla. Yash, your former hubby is just about tapped out, had to hawk his car and watch collection just to cover some of his outstanding debts, and I got word his bank accounts are running on fumes. I snorted derisively, sipping at my wine to mask the trill of dark satisfaction blooming in my chest. The arrogant prick was finally getting a taste of the poverty and despair he'd forced so many to endure over the years. What about his living situation? The P.I. shrugged. Had to move out of that swanky hotel suite, couldn't make the payments with his dwindling cash reserves. From what I gathered, he's been crashing on Buddy's couches here and there. The utterly pathetic image of my aristocratic, status-obsessed husband reduced to a vagrant pushed a humorless laugh past my lips. My, how the mighty have fallen, I mused with acid sweetness. What of his precious Lila? Has she wised up and abandoned him to his fate as well? The P.I. grinned, showing teeth like a shark that smelled blood in the water. You could say that. I got an eye full last night of your ex's latest living situation. He slid a plain envelope across the table, its contents crinkling faintly as I tore it open. Inside were a few grainy surveillance photos. The figures depicted unmistakable even through the poor resolution. There was Theo, looking as disheveled and wretched as I'd ever seen him. Hair must, clothes wrinkled, his formerly immaculate appearance in total disarray. And trailing at his heels like a starved dog was none other than Lila, that familiar vapid pout sculpted across her pretty features. I flipped through the damning stills with relish, drinking in each lurid detail. The squalid alleyway, the rusted doorway set into the crumbling brick façade, clearly the entrance to some flophouse or drug den where the downtrodden and degenerate of the city lurked. And there, in the middle of it all, was Theo Wilkins, the man who once had it all, now utterly depleted in every sense of the word, 
stripped of his empire, his wealth, even his freedom, thanks to the seemingly unending series of criminal and civil investigations still looming over him like a guillotine. My lips peeled back in a vicious grin as I regarded the physical manifestation of his disgrace, cold delight lancing through my veins. Fitting, wouldn't you say? I commented to the P.I., thumbing through the photos once more. That the two parasites who sucked me dry should end up rotting together in that cesspool where they belong? The investigator gave a wry grunt of assent. Way I see it. This is just the first installment of Karma's payback. He gestured to the images with a jerk of his grizzled chin. They'll bleed each other dry soon enough, turn on one another like the rats they are when there's nothing left to take. I nodded, a brilliant spark of clarity illuminating the best path forward at last. Yes, I rather think you're right. My smile took on an almost pitying quality as I slid the photos back into their envelope. Tossing it aside like so much discarded trash, I settled back into my chair with a contented sigh. Leave them to fester and devour each other. I've already won. It's time to move on and let the monsters cannibalize what little remains. Sipping the lush crimson of my wine, I gazed out over the glittering city skyline as the sun began its inexorable descent. A new day loomed, rife with possibility and promise, the first true fresh start I'd had in decades. Theo and his kind could remain entombed in their self-made hells. As for me, I was through dwelling on the past. My future was finally my own, and I had every intention of seizing it with both hands. The grand opening of the Marla Wilkins Foundation was a smashing success, with over 300 of the city's elite turning out in their finest attire. Champagne flowed freely as I worked the crowd, exchanging air kisses and accepting congratulations on my latest philanthropic endeavor. "'You're doing such wonderful work, darling,' gushed one perfectly coiffed matron, her diamond-encrusted fingers clutching my arm. "'So admirable.' the way you've persevered after that dreadful business with your former husband. I curled my lips in a gracious smile, ignoring the way her ravenous gaze swept over the opulent spread of past Horsdovers and crystalline ice sculptures. Thank you, Brenda. I only wish I'd found my calling sooner. It brings me such fulfillment to give back and support other women in need. The words were honeyed, but carried a razor's edge for those with the discernment to detect it. A shadow flickered across the woman's powdered features, her gilded mask slipping ever so briefly. No doubt she was recalling the tawdry headlines from a few months prior, when news of my depraved husband's affairs and financial treachery had rocked our glittering social circle. Yes, well, you've certainly demonstrated the most admirable strength of character, Brenda demurred with an airy wave of her diamond-crusted hand before slinking away in search of the next opportunity to be seen. I watched her go with a pitying sort of resignation. For all their wealth and privilege, people like Brenda were just as oblivious to life's harsh realities as Theo had been, sheltered from the cold consequences of their actions by a cozy butler of money and status. Well, their precious bubble of ignorance was about to burst in a most satisfying way. Excusing myself from the prying clutches of the uptown vultures, I slipped into the quiet shadows just off the main ballroom. A heavy wooden door separated the saccharine spectacle from the true heart of my foundation's operations. The pro bono legal clinics and advocacy services offered to women from all walks of life. My heels clicked in hushed reverence against the industrial flooring as I wound my way between modular cubicles and conference rooms. Dozens of women sat hunched over paperwork, many still sporting the same haunted, hopeless look I'd worn in the immediate wake of Theo's betrayal. But there were also glimmers of empowerment, of lives reclaimed, in the steely eyes and determined jawlines of those further along in their journeys. I drank in the sight of them with immense pride, knowing my pain and suffering had borne something so profound and meaningful as this. One such pillar of resilience rose to greet me as I paused in the doorway, a grimly attractive woman in her late thirties, with the unmistakable bearing of a military veteran. Ms. Wilkins, welcome, she offered with a firm handshake and an appraising look. I'm Rachel, head of legal counsel here at the Foundation. I returned her grip with equal confidence, instantly assured that I'd chosen the right woman to lead my cause. A pleasure to finally meet you, Rachel. I take it operations are running smoothly thus far? 
Okay. As much as can be expected for our first major event, the woman replied with a wry twist of her lips. We've already had over two dozen new intakes just tonight alone. My brow furrowed with concern. So many? I knew unhappily married women were a silent pandemic, but even I didn't foresee such an overwhelming need hitting us straight out of the gate. Rachel shrugged, the motion pulling at the crisp navy blazer stretched across her broad shoulders. Shows you we're filling a major void in the community. And that's not even counting the inquiries coming in through our hotline and website. I regarded her steadily, sensing that she had more to say on the matter. But— The other woman hesitated before forging ahead with a look of grim determination. To be frank, we're going to need to bolster our support staff sooner rather than later if we want to meet this demand. Both paid staffers and volunteers. Say no more, I replied, extending a calming hand. We'll issue a new round of postings first thing tomorrow for intake coordinators and caseworkers, and you have my full authority to directly recruit from the top law schools and advocacy organizations across the nation, whatever it takes to get these women the help they deserve. Relief flashed across Rachel's features as she offered a terse nod of appreciation. On it, ma'am. Sensing she was keen to return to the controlled chaos awaiting her, I stepped aside with one final reassurance. Just to be perfectly clear, money isn't an object here, Rachel not when it comes to funding our mission and expanding our reach. My smile took on a predatory edge as my mind drifted to the still immense fortune sitting in my accounts and the sweet knowledge of how those riches had been secured. I made damn sure of that. The other woman inclined her head in silent acknowledgement, the barest hint of a wolfish grin tugging at her lips as she grasped the full meaning of my words. With that unspoken sense of kinship flaring bright between us, Rachel turned on her heel and strode back into the fray, her focus solely on the battles awaiting her. As for me, I remained rooted in the hallway for a few lingering moments longer, taking in the almost sacred ambience of the Foundation's inner sanctum. The hushed tones of women bearing their traumas, the occasional muffled sound of shared catharsis. It was nothing short of a rebirth, one I was blessed to witness with each passing day. How bitterly ironic that the spoils of my victorious reckoning against Theo were precisely what enabled this sanctuary to thrive. Every cent he'd bled from innocence over the years, every morsel of his ill-gotten fortune, it now fueled a force of such overwhelming good, a cosmic counterbalance to the depravity that created it. My lips curved in a vindicated smile as I turned to rejoin the gala's revelers. No doubt the gossips and social elites were eagerly awaiting my return, if only to pry for the latest salacious morsels about my sordid marital downfall and rise from its ashes. Well, let them gawk and trade their petty whispers like demented parlor birds. For once in my life, I found myself utterly at peace, with the knowledge that theirs was a myopic, meaningless existence compared to the one I'd forged. They were the husks, the empty shells content to festively decay from the inside out while clinging to antiquated toxic notions of status and power. But me? I had transcended such silly vices at long last. In gutting the beast from my former life, I'd cultivated something too brilliant and all-encompassing to be contained by their cynical, grasping minds. I was the god's own cosmic jester. Dancing amidst the devastation I created— only to repurpose those smoldering ruins into something infinitely more resplendent. The ultimate alchemist, and the joke, for once, was entirely on the fools too blind to see the shining path laid out before them. Yes, my future had dawned bright and replete with possibility, all because I'd been brave enough to scorch the earth and let the ashes of my past serve as fertile soil for rebirth. And with my first rebirth now thriving before me, I couldn't wait to see what brilliant new metamorphosis awaited on the road ahead.